Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. I know the time with lunch and everything <laughs> is unfortunate, so you're making a very strong commitment uh, in being here, so appreciate that. Uh, we're going to have a very interesting conversation for sure, but I've known Alicia for a while now. Very interesting conversations every time we meet, so I hope that we can keep it on time as well. Yes. And we don't go over. Good lunch conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We also have to grab lunch as well. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alicia, thank you very much for joining. Lots to cover uh, about botanics, about the BTC Phi space. But before we do all of that, can you give us a bit of an overview of yourself? Like, what's your background? How did you end up in the space? Sure. So I'm originally Canadian, uh, born and raised. And actually, I got into crypto almost a decade ago at this point. So I was living in Brazil, working in private equity, very random. And I was looking for a way to send money back to Canada. And the real depreciated 30% that year. And I was like, OK, there must be some other options. Um, and that's how I found Bitcoin. So I read the Bitcoin white paper in 2015. And I was like, wow, this has the potential not just to help me, but to help the world. Um, before living in Brazil, I'd spent a lot of time all over Africa, Asia, Latin America. And I saw these common pain points. And it was this, the symptom underlying all of this was a broken global monetary system that I saw Bitcoin as the fix for. So that's when I got into Bitcoin, started buying Bitcoin, getting involved in the technical community in Brazil and South America. And then obviously Ethereum happened, the ICO era happened, uh, got very involved with that, became a trader, um, and kind of stayed involved in crypto over the years. And um, met my co-founder of Botanics a few years ago um, when we were studying together at Harvard. And he was a Bitcoin maxi. I was an ETH maxi at the time, obviously. Um, and one thing that really, really compelled me was like this power of Bitcoin scaling and programmability. So that's how we started building Botanics Labs and why we're here today. That's awesome. You started with the, the, your story by saying, you're, I'm from Canada, but I've traveled here, I've traveled there. Yeah. So every time I'm amazed by like, the places you've, se you've been and what you've seen, I think it plays a role in understanding like, how communities around the world are impacted by crypto, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. And you take that with you in all, in all our conversations. I've seen it like you trying to tie it to a real world use case you've seen somewhere and what it solves, which is amazing to see. Yeah. Now, bringing all that experience, all that insight into botanics, what is the unique value proposition uh, that you're building with botanics? But also, what do you think the unique value proposition of the broader BTC Phi space is, is to begin with? Yeah, that's a great question. So. One reason that I'm so excited about Bitcoin is because if you think of Bitcoin as an asset, you know, which has stood the test of time, it really hasn't changed. Bitcoin, by nature, is a very adversarial protocol. It actually is not meant to change that much because a lot of the purists think it's, it's quite perfect and we shouldn't change it. So what that means is it's kind of stayed as a store of value instead of really realizing its full potential as a medium of exchange, as some sort of full global money. And one thing you can see in Bitcoin is that, you know, since its inception in 2008, the only growth has really been in the price and it's been through like market dynamics. Um, there's so much more we can build on Bitcoin, right? If you look at everything that's been done in Ethereum, everything that's being built in Solana, there's potential to bring all of that scaling, all of that programmability back to Bitcoin. So I think Bitcoin stand, has stood the test of time, most permissionless, most decentralized, most secure. And that decentralization is what makes it the perfect base to be the foundation of a global interconnected economy. And so that is the potential that really drives us, is building for a world that runs on Bitcoin. Um, and that's how we got to building Botanics. And the other insight that we had that I think is equally important is that it was the lack of the EVM that was really preventing Bitcoin from achieving its full potential. So Bitcoiners in general tend to be more rust aligned, right? Uh, so you see a lot of new VMs coming about like Wasm, like SVM, like MVM, and we can see a lot of potential there. But if you think about the EVM, it is the winning virtual machine, right? The most devs, the most tooling, the most ecosystem, the most Lindy software layer by far. And so just by virtue of bringing that to Bitcoin, you unlock a world of possibility, especially within DeFi, which I think is especially the most pertinent. That is really true, actually. Like, there were some like, things to solve when you tried to merge these two ecosystems. Yeah. Now, when you look at what will make 
this effort successful? What is the key thing you need to solve outside the VM part? What do you think will yeah. make like the winner in this space? I think the winner is going to be predicated on two things. One, decentralization, because at the end of the day, that is what makes Bitcoin great, and that's, what made, that's what's made it stand the test of time. So the most decentralized Bitcoin scaling solutions are the ones that are going to win. We are not fully decentralized yet. We're getting there. No Bitcoin protocol that is claiming to be is decentralized by nature. Um, I think there's a lot we can do to get, get ourselves there, but that is, that is what's going to actually determine the winner. And the second thing, which is even more important, is getting Bitcoiners on board, right? Most Bitcoiners have never DeFied before. They've never ever engaged on chain before, aside from buy, sell, hodl through some sort of a sex. And I think there's a massive potential to bring the next million or two million Bitcoiners on chain and speak to them in, the, in a way that they want to be spoken to. Um, I think we've chatted about this, but Bitcoiners do not want points. They do not want 400% yield. They want 4% yield coming from stable sources in a way that makes financial sense to them. So those types of applications are what is exciting for a Bitcoiner. And I think the right protocols are ones that are decentralized, Bitcoin aligned, and can speak to this new set of users. And that is why Bitcoin is having a moment, because uh, in Ethereum land, you know, it's been the same liquidity, the same users being shuffled right from chain to chain. Um, and you're seeing retail exhausted by that. And so what Bitcoin brings is an expansion of retail to 100x what it is now. That's indeed like very interesting insight about like the you know four hundred versus four percent, but safe and stable and yeah. like not taking extra risks, which resonates a lot with Bitcoiners. I have to say like they're there and they're not bringing Bitcoin to the other side easily because they trust the Bitcoin network yes. uh, for its security more than whatever yield they can generate from it. Mm -hmm. That's so true. When we look at botanics and when we look at the ecosystem that you're trying to build based on these principles, what does that ecosystem look like? What does that community look like for you? How are you looking to build it? Yeah, it's really interesting. When I first started building our ecosystem and community, I was very laser focused on DeFi. And there was a reason for that. If you think about Bitcoin's primary use case, it's being the best mo money in the history of the world. And by virtue of that, it makes sense that you would build DeFi applications on Bitcoin. Um, but what's been really, really interesting, and we have all of the DeFi use cases, as you guys may or may not know. So we have DEXs, we have stables, perps, lending, borrowing, staking. We have all of these basic use cases that are now going to be built on Bitcoin for the Bitcoiner user base. But I think what's been also compelling is to see what else people want to build on Bitcoin. And one thing that's really stood out is the censorship resistance, again, that only Bitcoin provides. So there are people that are building Socialfy, there are people that are building games because they actually want something that is censorship resistant. We have this one dApp that's being built on Botanix and they're building a decentralized Reddit because they actually want to have political conversations and not be censored, right? And again, only Bitcoin offers that. So it's what, that's what's been surprising is that Bitcoin transcends, Bitcoin and Bitcoin's ideology transcends DeFi. And uh, one of our investors tweeted something recently about, okay, the best cult wins. And Bitcoin is the best cult in the history of crypto. You know, um, I was at- That's a big statement from a yeah. former Ethereum Maxia. Yes, yeah, former reformed Ethereum Maxi. I'm now unfortunately a toxic Bitcoin Maxi. Uh, went from 60, 40 to 95, five. Um, but it's really, really interesting. I was at a Bitcoiner conference last week in Lugano, Switzerland. And they, yeah, it, it's, they, it is truly a cult, you know? I mean, they have Bitcoin merch, they only are friends with Bitcoiners, so it's, it's, a, it's a different mindset to tap into. And I think especially with ETFs coming online, there are people who have bought crypto that have not bought any, that, that, that have never bought before, and they're mostly buying Bitcoin, right? Um, like my father bought Bitcoin for the first time through an ETF, and that just opens up so much more mainstream adoption and acceptance um, that's actually going to catalyze crypto forward. Now, as you look to bring that growth uh, in the ecosystem, in botanics, in the protocols building there, our partnership, the one we announced recently, uh, that goes on feeds, 
TCP, streams. It covers a lot of different use cases with critical infrastructure. How does that fit into your plan? And yeah. where do you see like Chainlink supporting you Absolutely. in that plan? So when we started building Botanics Labs, I always wanted Chainlink. <laughs> it is by far the most decentralized. So in terms of maintaining that Bitcoin alignment, um, it's the only one we ever considered and you know aggressively pursued, as you know, Todoris, right? So um, I think there's several pieces that really fell into place, right? One is CCIP, which is your interoperability solution. Um, I think it's been really interesting, the evolution of CCIP over the past year, right? Um, I think we, we obviously, it is by far the most decentralized. It has you know, native integrations in all of the top chains. But I think beyond that, my builders, right, all of our ecosystem are now requesting CCIP, right, because they now recognize its technological excellence. Um, so that's been an incredible evolution to see, and I'm happy to you know, be a part of that. Um, and then, of course, Chainlink is known to be the stalwart within the data feeds and the streams world, especially for a lot of the perp dexes um, that are deployed on Botanics. They require streams, right? Um, and so it's been great to work along all of these dimensions, also with the build program and work with upcoming protocols, um, and just see how to make Chainlink more Bitcoin native as well. Now that is actually like a very big vision that we both discussed um, very early on in our conversations. Like I was trying to hear from you and Willem, like how can people understand this space? What is happening? What would solve for this space? And there was a very clear match of we need both the way to bring Bitcoin, but we also yeah. need the way to add utility through by building an ecosystem, by having the protocols utilizing it with the right infra. Exactly. Because if you build it in the right way for Bitcoiners to come, then utilizing infra that is not as decentralized or secure will be a, like half the effect that you exactly. want to see, half the impact. Yeah, and just in terms of the whole maintaining Bitcoiner alignment, they, Bitcoiners, again, who've never engaged in DeFi before or any retail that's never engaged in crypto or DeFi before, there's a few brands that they recognize and they trust, and Chainlink is one of them. It's, I've interviewed hundreds of users at this point, and there's maybe five names in crypto that they know, and Chainlink is always among them. So um, that level of reputation you know, precedes Chainlink, and that's why I think it is very well positioned to win in the Bitcoin space as it con continues to be. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think the whole team uh, appreciates that feedback. The, I want to, like, since you use the time that we have and hear more about your plans like as a team, what are you looking forward to? In the next uh, in the next months, of course, yeah. So we're releasing, we're re-releasing our testnet in a few weeks. That's going to be the final version of our testnet before mainnet, mainnet soon TM, of course. Um, but I think it's really exciting. We're featuring a lot of tangible, real use cases on our testnet v1. So the ability to engage in simple swaps, the ability to engage with stables, the ability to engage with perp taxes. And I think it's really important to bring these use cases to life. Um, teach a lot of people who've never DeFi before how to install MetaMask, for example. That's a very crucial part of the education that is essential to really, as I mentioned, bring the next million users on chain because that's what really drives us is like this new users and new liquidity piece. Um, so yeah, that's what we're really excited for. We have a bunch of fun marketing, community building activities. We we have by far the largest organic community in Bitcoin just because we've been building for two years now. So our we have community ambassadors <laughs> building events all over the world that we have nothing to do with actually, which is really cool. There was one that happened in like Georgia in Eastern Europe two weeks ago. We're like, cool, that's awesome. And they were all just talking about how much they love the spider chain. Um, so just seeing that sort of organic community happening is really rewarding and we're gonna keep engaging with that as well. Great, thanks for sharing that. I didn't know about the Georgia event, but uh, I don't think we have an event there. So I, yeah, it's great to see that. Yeah, for yeah. us too. And we're having, I think, our first. Um, I forgot. There's a word for our community in India, Botanics India. But yeah, it's it's a massive community, and we're doing our. They're doing their first event in Bangalore in a few weeks, which is exciting and fully planned by the community. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, awesome, awesome to see that bootstrap. Yeah. Uh, kicking off. Well, Alicia, thank you. Thank you for being here, sharing the, your plans and insights in the space. And looking Boy. forward to these next steps. Excited to keep working with Chainlink. Same. Thank you. Thank you. you.